All right, so we're going to talk about the number one most common mistake with fall bass fishing. And I typically try to stay away from the word mistake when it's pertaining to anybody except for myself because I'm extremely tough on myself. But whenever I hear the word mistake, it has this extremely negative like connotation to it about like you did something wrong. And a lot of times maybe you didn't do something wrong. You just kind of got kind of overthought it or did something like that. So the number one mistake that I see people make and not only that I still make this mistake all the time I do it constantly whenever I go to a new body of water or something I just seem to overthink it so the biggest thing that I you know have kind of realized over the years about fishing in the fall is that most of the bass are like in a polarizing state it's going to mean that yeah you can downsize and you can go ultra finesse and stuff like that and get more bites but it seems to me that the best application or the best like way to go about fishing in the fall is to cover as much water as possible with three or four baits that you have a lot of confidence in and try to find those aggressive fish because there's always some aggressive fish and if you feel like the best way for you to fish is offshore brush piles rock piles road beds whatever that is just run as much of that as you possibly can in the fall because the bait is super scattered this time of year the fish are super scattered this time of year if you feel like you're really good at you know fishing in that mid-depth range and finding that little obscure stuff and kind of that mid-depth range that's what you should do and if you feel like you really just enjoy fishing the bank like i do or you feel like you're good at it you should just fish shallow and fish the bank and fish flats and stuff like that. But the biggest thing in the fall is you want to cover your bases. That's what I, that would be my tip for the fall is cover your bases. You want a topwater bait. You want something you can wind around shallow. It doesn't matter if it's a vibrating jig, a spinner bait, a sh uh, really shallow running square bill. I'll show you the one that I have tied on right now actually. This is the Spro Fat John 50. It only runs like a foot and a half deep. I wind it around super, super shallow around some of these isolated stumps and rocks and wood and stuff like that. Super shallow, but that's because I like to fish shallow. You could throw a spinner bait or a vibrating jig in kind of this same exact application. I just feel like for right now, this is a little bit better imitator of kind of the forage that they're feeding on you know exactly like today what i've seen them doing so i kind of mix it up and i'll take that and if i'm fishing uh if i know i'm going to be on a lake that i'm going to be trying to target that four to five foot range i'll throw you know a, a standard little john something that gets down there in that four foot range a little bit better but i'm basically only going to have one or two of those tied on for the day and then i'm going to have you know just something for every single section of the water column and that's the biggest thing is find those aggressive fish on the way that you want to fish and just realize you're probably not going to have a 40 fish type of day in the fall usually whenever i take off in the fall if i catch 12 or 15 fish i had a really really good day and honestly it seems like when i have one of those days where i catch 25 fish and i've had some of those just recently where i've caught 25 fish in a tournament and i didn't have much weight so a lot of times it seems like if you are catching a bunch of fish you're on a school of small ones and those big ones seem to be a little bit more random and a little bit more kind of spread out and stuff like that so another really good one is a buzz bait you just cover a ton of water with it you know it obviously catches really big ones you can skip it under docks you can throw it over riprap you can crank it over lay downs you can do anything you want to with this bait that's why it's kind of a staple for me especially in the fall it's one of those things i'll throw it all day and it's just kind of my top water bait if i'm going to some lakes that have a lot more bushes and some of this flooded stuff like this behind me i will have a frog on the front deck just because and if i'm fishing a lake that has a lot of matted vegetation i'm going to have a frog on the front deck because it really excels in that application too but as a standard all over the country that buzz bait and that square bill crankbait is going to be kind of my two for covering the surface and all the way down to four or five feet you know and after that then that's kind of the depth range that i want to be fishing in so after that, I will typically flip a jig around, you know, that stuff that's anywhere from two feet all the way out to eight or 10 feet deep. But usually I actually fish a little bit shallower than that in the fall. It's usually two feet to five or six. And I'll just flip this jig around. I mean, anything you come to, this is the Untamed Tackle Ace Jig. A half ounce is my standard in the fall, unless I'm on a draw down lake and a lot of the wood and cover and stuff is in like two feet. I'll go to a three eight. So if I'm skipping you know docks or something that are only two feet or three feet deep i'll go down to a 3 8 ounce jig but the thing that i'm just trying to stress right here put the put the boat in reverse accidentally the thing i'm trying to stress right here is go fishing in the fall and cover every single aspect of the water column yeah if i'm if i'm on a certain lake that has a lot of spotted bass i'm going to have you know some brush piles and have a shaky head tied on and a drop shot or something like that but that's going to be lake specific these three baits right here along with 
I may be a shaky head or a worm, like a missile quiver to flip around or something like that, a little bit deeper, a little bit more finessey. Those are about the only three, four, or five rods that I'm gonna have tied on. So that's kind of the way that I see people fish the fall that I think is a little bit you know, backwards is they really try to chase the bait, they, and, which is a good thing. I always want to be fishing around the bait, but I don't want to be out there because a lot of times those fish that are schooling on the bait are not your big fish, unless you're on certain types of bodies of water. But down here where I'm at, those ones that come up schooling are typically spotted bass, and the largemouth is what wins on this river system I'm on. And they're usually on the bank. So try not to overthink it. Try to just cover water. Fish what looks good. You know, don't like, just fish the baits you want to fish. Fall is a good time for that. You can catch them on whatever you want to catch them on. So take the three or four baits that you want to catch them on the most, lay them on the front deck, and go cover as much water as possible. So I still fall victim to that. I know some of y'all probably do too. Think about that next time y'all go fishing in the fall and go have a good time. That's what I like doing. I like fun fishing with braid and 25-pound fluorocarbon. So that's what I like doing. That's why I do it so much in the fall and I seem to have pretty fair results in the fall. So that'd be my advice to people that are struggling a little bit more in the fall deviate based on the lake but keep it simple as a standard so appreciate y'all watching we're about to pick them three baits up and hopefully go catch us a couple